Coming up on today's show, Summer Game Fest is officially coming back. A new video game union has been formed, and Warner Brothers is once again up to no good. What's good, everybody, and welcome to another episode of the What's Good Games podcast, your source for video game news, commentary, analysis, and funny stuff every Friday. I am one of your hosts, Andrea Renee, joined by Mrs. Rihanna Manuel Pena. Hello, good afternoon. Good afternoon, indeed. Lovely to see you. We both just had a little hit of chocolate and sugar to get mm. the show going because it's that time of year when you go to the stores and candy is just everywhere. Oh my gosh. I mean, they find a reason to put candy in stores most times, but I, the Easter candy aisle is particularly enticing for me. Is it because they're egg-shaped? Probably. Do I buy more of them if they're in a chocolate bunny form? Definitely. It seems like it's less in volume somehow if it's shaped like a cute little animal, but it's not. It just no. tastes better. Yeah. I mean, anything in the shape of a cute animal, I am here for. And we are <laughs> glad that you are here, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the show. I want to say thank you to this month's super producers, Board Ape Gamers Club, Ferris Atia, Joshua Franklin, Justin Foshi, and Punctified. And welcome to our super cast community, Rob Sup, Sarah Rainwater, Jose Reyes, and Ryan Schoen. You can join our Supercast premium membership at whatsgoodgames.supercast.com like those fine folks did. And I've already uploaded the first What's Good Uncut bonus episode. Ooh. That's well, it's exciting. It's not a bonus episode. It's a bonus clip. But that is one of the fun things that I'm going to be doing is kind of taking some little tidbits from the cutting room floor that doesn't make it into the weekly episode and putting it up there for all of our premium members. So uh, check it out when you have a moment. We'd really There's appreciate a lot of fun the stuff. support. There's a lot of fun stuff on the cutting room floor. <laughs> there is. There's some, there's some funny stuff. There's some interesting stuff. There's some weird stuff. Mm. And then there's mm. some very inappropriate stuff, and it's probably mm -hmm. going to be a mix of all of it. Oh, yeah. 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 For sure. Enjoy, everyone. Yeah, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be great. Um, this week's episode is brought to you by What's Good Games Premium, but I'll tell you more about that later. Let's go ahead and dive right into the news, shall we? Let's do it. Summer Game Fest is coming back, Rihanna. <gasps> Yay, it didn't get canceled like other things. <laughs> oh, my goodness. I was like, listen, if they had come up and like, hey, there's not enough, you know, interest this year, I think I would have been like super depressed. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We need something in the summer. So I'm glad it's back. Yeah. So they sent out a press release about what's been going on with Summer Game Fest. They mentioned that they had incredible live stream numbers and more traffic than they had before so of course they're like obviously we're coming back we're killing it right now which is very exciting and it's all happening on friday june 7th at 2 p.m pacific time is when the live stream will kick off they will once again be having an in-person event at the youtube theater and tickets to the general public go on sale starting may 7th at 9 a.m. Pacific time via Ticketmaster. You can head to the Summer Game Fest website to get all of those details, so mark your calendars if you're planning on going. In addition to the live showcase, fans can look forward to other live streams and events during the Summer Game Fest. The full lineup of participants and activities will be announced in the coming months, according to the press release. But returning is Summer Game Fest Play Days, an invite-only media and influencer event in downtown Los Angeles for hands-on gameplay with upcoming games and it will be produced by the wonderful folks at I Am 8-Bit. It will be happening June 8th, 9th, and 10th. So exciting that they're expanding it by another day. I know oh, yeah. we definitely didn't get to see everything that was there last year. So glad that they're giving us a bit more time. And they're also bringing back Day of the Devs SGF edition. The folks over at Day of the Devs announced last year that they were going nonprofit, and they have Love to spotlight the independent game community. According to the press release, Day of the Devs SGF edition will be presented online via live stream immediately following Summer Game Fest live showcase and will feature more than a dozen incredible games from developers of all different backgrounds. I love seeing that. Day of the Devs is always one of my favorite things to tune into because my backlog, <laughs> which we've talked about a lot lately over on uh, the Dan Ariana show, uh, it, it's filled with indies. Like, like there are always those games that 
are, you know, usually bite sized. You can, you know, jump in, have a really great original experience, share it with your friends, talk about it, and then move on. Um, some indies get a little big, <laughs> but uh, for the most part, those are the the length of games that I can actually play on a regular basis. So I love seeing Day of the Devs coming in summer. So we get double dose for the year. It's really exciting. And I'm also curious to know, like, what other events are going to be popping up around Summer Game Fest. I know last year we went to go see Ubisoft. Um, I think it was the Sunday after the Summer Game Fest. Ubisoft there, of course, Forward. is mm-hmm. Ubisoft Forward. We and saw some games Xbox in person there. Summer Showcase. The Xbox Showcase. Yeah, so like this June week seems to still be the the spot, right? It still seems to be the the weekend weekend that everybody wants to show off their stuff and you know have our little Christmas in the summer time for the gaming community. And yeah. I'm really excited Summer Game Fest is back as that Tim Pole event and things can start popping up around it. Now we just got to plan a, a What's Good Games meetup. <laughs> yes. Honestly, I'm glad that you mentioned that. Start planning it now. I'm putting that in the back of my in the back of my brain. Would love to do something. We haven't done a meetup since before the pandemic. I mean, I guess we technically did one at PAX East 2023. Last year? Was that last year? 23? No, I think... Was it last year? It twenty. No, it was last year. It was last year because I was pregnant. Yeah. Yeah, that was 23. Yeah, okay. that was last year. Oof. Man. Yeah. <laughs> Time flies. <laughs> My brain is just mush these days, ladies and gentlemen. So apologies for the delay in trying to remember exactly when that happened. It felt both simultaneously not that long ago and an age ago. And I think mm-hmm. a lot of us feel that way lately. But we are excited for Summer Game Fest to be back, especially in the wake of E3 being officially canceled and not happening this summer. And I think a lot of people looking around the North American convention scene going, you know, what is going to take its place? Is Summer Game Fest going to be that thing? We've talked already on the show about how there are different beasts, apples and oranges, as it were, not comparing the mm-hmm. same thing, but... I'm glad to hear that they'll be back, and I'm sure we'll hear more in the coming months. And um, congrats on um, on that news. Now, normally, we would have just left the opening news block at that one story, but this next story is a little bit more than a headline, and I wanted to chat about it quickly. So we got a press release earlier this week about a new AAA studio opening. There definitely has been no shortage of new studios opening over the last few years, Several of them still deep in development. We have no idea what their projects are going to be. But this one, I think I was a little bit surprised about because I didn't realize that Stig had left Respawn. So Mm. Stig Asmussen, who was previously at Respawn Entertainment, has announced that he's opening a new AAA studio. Yes, and Rihanna's just coincidentally wearing her Respawn Entertainment today. <laughs> it actually shirt today. W- was a coincidence, um, okay? This is what was sitting on my dresser when I walked out this morning. You know what? <laughs> it, it, it covers your body. That's all that matters. Are there stains on it? Who cares? You're, you're doing great, Mama. Um, <laughs> according to the press release sent out, t- renowned multi-award winning game director Stig Asmussen reveals Giant Skull a new AAA game studio dedicated to building gameplay-driven, story-immersed action-adventure games set in captivating worlds. So basically, what he was working on. (laughs) Asmussen has over 25 years of experience in game development across some of the most critically acclaimed franchises and most most recently the game director of Star Wars Jedi Survivor and Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order for Respawn. And prior to that, he was game director on God of War 3 and the art director for God of War 2 at Sony Santa Monica. Uh, So Stig has a quote in the press release that says, we've assembled a talented team renowned for immersive storytelling, heroic combat, and exhilarating traversal. And our goal is to craft a rich universe that players will lose themselves in for years to come. I'm not going to go over the list of all of the talent that he has brought on so far at the studio, but it includes people from games like Fortnite, Valorant, League of Legends, and then people from the Respawn team that he worked on as well, and um, Rocksteady as well. Asmussen did an interview with IGN where he said, we have a very clear vision on the type of game that we're going to make, and that's playing to the strengths of myself, single-player-focused, third-person, action-adventure, gameplay-driven that's seamlessly integrated into a compelling narrative. Those are the main pillars of our criteria. If there was an opportunity 
We have a lot of experience with licensed games, obviously, but it's very compelling to make an original IP as well. We can flex in either direction. Now, I pulled this quote because I thought it was interesting, the idea that they haven't really picked a lane yet if they're going to be creating a new IP or potentially working on an existing IP and making a new game in an existing IP. And I'm like, hmm... Hmm. Interesting. <laughs> yeah. I also find it interesting that, you know, while um, Stig is saying that they're focusing on his strengths, right? You know, this is a narrative action adventure. It's going to be, you know, a focused single player game, but they have so much talent from multiplayer properties. I just wonder how that nets out. Like is, I wonder if there's more to that story. Just I'm a little bit curious about how that team came together. Well, it feels to me like a lot of the big corporate people who are funding AAA want multiplayer, right? They're yes. like, must have multiplayer. They want that battle pass money for sure. Right. And Stig is saying, well, but look at how well the Jedi games did for EA and for Respawn. And I would say, yes, you could have both. Yeah. Why not? Porking I like both. Does. <laughs> I mean, granted, doing both well is incredibly challenging. I mean, Call of Duty has been trying to do it for years, and I would argue that their campaigns are really interesting, but they're way more limited in scope than a game like Star Wars Jedi Survivor, right? Like, that game was very large for, like, kind of this open-world RPG action-adventure type of game. And so adding a really robust multiplayer component to that is... A, a, a tall task. <laughs> yeah. So maybe one of those things will be more robust than the other. Um, but if they're both really big and cool, cool. Yeah. I love big, cool things. <laughs> yeah. Big, cool things. More of them. Well, this is exciting. I imagine we'll know what he's working on in like 2028. <laughs> it's going to be a Summer, while, for, Summer Game Fest 2027 will be our first look. <laughs> well, they only have about 30 people on the team, and it's a AAA, so they have a little bit more recruiting to go. <laughs> yeah. Well, there's lots of talent out there. I'm sure they'll put together an incredible staff. Yes. So uh, we will keep an eye on what Giant Skull is up to <laughs> in the coming years. All right, we're going to take our first break of the show. When we come back, we have some additional headlines, including details on the new Activision Union and that new Super Mario Brothers movie that's in the works. Stick with us. We'll be right back. Let's get into this week's headlines. And there's not a ton of headlines going on, but I did want to call out a couple of things. First up. 600 Activision QA workers have unionized and Microsoft has voluntarily recognized. Hundreds of workers across multiple states have created the Activision Quality Assurance United Union, the largest video game workers union under the Communication Workers of America, the CWA, here in the United States. Organizing committee member Kara Fannin told Polygon, QA and customer servers are the lowest paid jobs and often looked down upon either within the industry or by customers. We have the weakest protections currently, and we want to make sure that we're strong so our work can keep going the way it is. We want to be supporting these games and working really hard on them. Activision Publishing includes franchises like Call of Duty, Crash Bandicoot, Tony Hawk Pro Skater, among others, and the group joined unionized Microsoft and Activision Blizzard employees at Blizzard Albany, Raven Software, and ZeniMax. Now, this is great to hear. Obviously, there's like a workers' rebellion happening across the states right now, but... You know, having worked with QA personally and when back in my days in uh, publishing, it, it is definitely a grind. And those folks are the lifeblood of getting something out without it completely falling apart and tanking. So it's awesome to see them getting more support. Yeah, stop disrespecting QA. Yeah, they important. they save your asses <laughs> so, they, they really so do. many times. <laughs> That's awesome. So next story. A uh, new Super Mario Brothers movie is in development. So Illumination and Nintendo announced that they are producing a new animated film based on the world of Super Mario Brothers. This new animated film based on the world of Super Mario, Super Mario Brothers is planned to be released on April 3rd, 2026. So we already have a date 
Let's see if that moves. In the U.S. and many additional markets globally with select territories releasing throughout the month of April. The film will be produced by Chris Melodandri, founder and CEO of Illumination, and Shigeru Miyamoto, representative director, fellow of Nintendo. Directed by Aaron Harvath and Michael Jelinek, and written by Matthew Fogel. The film will be co-financed by Universal Pictures and Nintendo and distributed theatrically worldwide by Universal Pictures. So obviously, uh, they're really happy on how it went the first time because it was, what, the first billion-dollar movie of the year in 2023? Yeah, it was record-breaking and was such a fun movie. I've watched it so many times (laughs) since, and I feel like I still pick up little Easter eggs here and there. Um, I do hope they lean into more of the iconic... Super Mario Brothers sounds and soundtrack this next yeah. time around. But, you know, there was a really fun little post credits Easter egg that I'm going to leave unspoken. If you missed it, you should go check it out. So they have to, like, take that somewhere, right? <laughs> we knew that they weren't going to just stop at one. I know. They got to, they got to revisit that. Fan, fans want it. And they'll yeah, pay money for it. There's We've so shown many so. characters that they haven't even touched on yet. So, yeah. No, I'm excited for that. Yeah, yeah well, uh, it'd be great. <laughs> April 3rd, allegedly. Let's see what happens before then. <laughs> well, typically theatrical releases don't usually move very much because of the scheduling involved with oh, IMAX yeah. and Dolby and all the specialty tickets that you can sell. So um, I don't anticipate that moving, unlike video games, which move constantly. Oh, gosh, yeah. Um, they don't move the same way. That's true. Yeah. They don't I just mean, like, I know with all, all, brick and all of the different... The way that feature films do, and those... We all yeah. saw what happened to Mission Impossible when <laughs> Barbenheimer came in and took all of the IMAX screens. <laughs> oh, sorry, Tom. Yeah, I, I was just referring to the fact that there's so many movie houses moving things around right now. It's just... A bit, a bit of a re, reforming of how they do things. It seems like with, especially Disney and Marvel. But, you know, I, I'm excited for this one, and I, I don't have any doubt that it'll be just as delightful as the first one. Yeah, delightful. What a great word. Me hey. does not describe this next story though. This next no. story, <laughs> not delightful. <laughs> Warner Brothers <sighs> is now erasing games as it plans to delist Adult Swim published titles. Several indie games are in danger of being delisted on Steam and the PlayStation Store as Warner Brothers Discovery begins plans to retire games from its Adult Swim Games publishing label. First reported by developer Owen Reedy, creator of Small Radio's Big Television. The decision by WBD follows the corporation's previous cost-cutting measures like infamously scrapping the Batgirl movie. Reedy Mm. responded to the notice from WBD by making their game free to download from the studio's website. Other developers have confirmed they've received warnings as well and that their games will be removed in the next 60 days. Developer of Sound Dodger, Michael Molinari, told Polygon in an email, I don't know if they're delisting it or deleting it. I pleaded with the rep to transfer ownership to my company as I still retain all IP rights and game rights. I sent him a link to Steam's transfer page and explained clearly that it takes literally three clicks to transfer ownership to me. He rejected my request. Molinari said the Warner Brothers Discovery representative said the decision not to transfer ownership back to the developers, quote, stems from logistical and resource constraints and the limited capacity of our team. Molinari expressed frustration that WBD's planned removal of his game and others would lead to over a decade of downloads, community guides, reviews, and patch notes suddenly vanishing. This is such a bummer. I'm like, why? <sighs> if it takes three clicks, just have somebody do the three clicks. The idea that they're using this stems from logistical and resource constraints as an excuse is absolutely unacceptable. Yeah, it, it almost seems actionable. Like, I'm not a lawyer. I don't know how that stuff works. But it, it, it woefully lame <laughs> as far as excuses go yes. like like literally like you just you hire a contractor like get someone on fiverr like like that, that is not that difficult <laughs> to, to surpass to do the clicks like, on the steam ownership page i mean if that's really the issue like there, there's no way that that is truly all that is stopping them from 
keeping everything on, at least letting people access what they already said. I'm trying to reset my camera as I'm talking because I'm so frustrated. Like all letting good. people access the community pages, like they said, like all of the conversations, all of the shared experiences, like that part of it is still valuable. Like, you know, if you want to speak in dollars and cents, like these companies tend to lean towards, like there's still money there. There's still customers there. There's still community there. There's still people there who will support future projects and other things that you could do. Like, why would you alienate them to the point that they just can't even boot it up anymore? That sucks, man. It just is so frustrating when it's a fixable thing. Like, and, you know, there was other developers that Polygon talked to when they were doing the reporting for this story. So, you know, thank you to them for you know, doing some good due diligence there, talking to these mm -hmm. developers. I just don't understand. Mm. Like, it just feels so punitive. And I don't know why it needs to be punitive. And especially when it, it sounds like from the developers that it's not that that hard to to transfer the ownership because some of these games are over a decade old. And as we know, because here on What's Good Games, we kindly ask our fans and listeners to take time out of their day to leave us a five-star review because those reviews really matter they in do. rankings and in helping people identify you know what is quality content and you know what is potentially not quality content like having to make developers go through that process all over again is just just feels really cold-hearted in a way that's like yeah. you don't have you don't have to look like the bad guy here. Like no one's trying to tell you that you can't run your business the way that you see fit. But this just feels gross, and it doesn't seem like it's going to be that much extra work. I just yeah. I feel really bad for all these developers. I mean, several of them have come out to say, you know, don't worry, the game is not going to be gone forever. You know, if it gets delisted, we will relist it ourselves. Several of them already expressed that they own you know like the de developers in the story they own the ip and the game rights so they'll be able to republish it but the idea that they have to republish it instead of just getting the ownership transferred just is it's it's stupid Here, it's stupid it. and why burn that, that bridge my daughter is now starting to call things stupid and we're now <laughs> into that phase where i have to be very mindful of what i say but oh it boy. is it feels stupid <laughs> yeah it, it and like, why damage that that relationship? Like, why anger community when you don't have to? You know, like, just uh, get get more help. <laughs> like, people need jobs out here. Like, you can do it. Well, it's like, uh, yeah. It's not even like Come they on. have to get more help. I'm like, you just... just oh, that's what they're alleging. It would take probably somebody, like, less than half a day to do all of the games and the Adult Swim games. You know what? I'll do it. Warner Brothers Discovery. <laughs> I'll volunteer for free. I will do it. I will help you out. Just give me three fifty. Like I'll do the three clicks. <laughs> like, come on, <laughs> jeez Louise. This oh, yeah, that's a boy. bummer. I'm sorry to the devs, man. That's y'all are y'all are getting hit real hard sometimes. Man. It's not it's not fair. Yeah, it's not it's not, it's not. fair. Um, well, then I want to end with a quick headline that I didn't write in the show notes, but that I want to uh, mention in case people out there didn't see. Um, on Saturday, April 6th, starting at 4 p.m. Eastern Time, the second annual Able Gamers Gala is set to commence. They are doing their annual fundraising gala for the second time and hoping to raise even more money this year through their virtual platform where you can do all kinds of super cool things like meet your friends in virtual spaces, buy mystery boxes full of swag, you could even dress up if you want to. There's mm -hmm. live DJs, live bartenders, and basically it's all to support our friends at Able Gamers who are doing fantastic work in the accessibility community, making sure that people have both the hardware and the software to enable them to be part of the fantastic community of video game players around the world. So I wanted to give our friends a little shout out. They're celebrating 20 years of changing lives. So congrats to the entire team at Able Gamers for that. We are doing a special episode of What's Good Games with Steven Spawn, the Senior Director of Business Development for Able Gamers and friend of the show. He's been on a couple of times and he and I have hosted together. So hopefully you guys will check that episode out in a couple of weeks, but wanted to just give them a nod. If you guys want to learn more about the gala, it's ablegamers.org slash gala where you can buy your tickets. Even if you can't go to the gala, every dollar helps them support their mission of changing lives through video games. So just wanted to... 
give them a little tip of the hat. Yay. Nice note to end on. Yeah. And that's going to do it for this week's headlines. When we come back, we're going to talk about what we've been playing. But before we do that, you've got to listen to some ads. And if you don't want to listen to ads, you know where you got to go. What's Good Games at Supercast.com. Let's talk about what we've been playing. And instead of talking about Final Fantasy and Helldivers for, what, the fourth week in a row? Like, There's so much game. Could just keep talking about spreading democracy. <laughs> <laughs> they added flying bugs, Rihanna. Did you see that? Yes. Oh, my goodness gracious. I was like, why, though? <sighs> yeah, I, I've at, I'm at the point now where I'm starting having dreams about the bugs and Helldivers, which is where I'm like, mm, maybe I should play some other things. So I've been trying <laughs> to mix it up a little bit because it's getting a little scary in my head. Yeah, so I, I guess if you have the jetpack, then the flying bugs aren't as scary. But I've only gotten to use the jetpack once somebody dropped it in a game one time because mm -hmm. um, I'm not high enough level to buy it. But someday... Yeah, the, the jetpacks and the mechs are fun, for sure. For sure. This Except game is just great. when you explode in the mech, that's not, that's not very fun. <laughs> and that happened no. to me several times. You should be careful about where you throw it, too. <laughs> yeah, you know, being careful on the battlefield feels like good advice, but who's got time? You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, friendly fire is a game mechanic, so why not explore that sometimes, you know? Yeah, you know, see, you said it first. Um, a game without <laughs> friendly fire, though... But also lots of fun and jetpacks, Fortnite. Yes. So uh, Fortnite Chapter 5 Season 2 uh, just dropped this past week. Uh, it's called Myths and Mortals. And I've been playing. I'm back on my Fortnite bag. Yay. And uh, it, my gateway drug was buying Lady Gaga skin. And then, of course, the trailer came out for this new content. And then they had the audacity to just sneak in Avatar Korra at the end with no mention at all. She's, I don't think she's even in the cover art for this expansion. How dare you, Epic? Just want to say that. Like, you are she's on some mad. other shit. I'm upset <laughs> with that. But she's not coming till the end of the season. There's a couple weeks before we get to, you know, lead up to her in the battle pass. So fine. Okay, whatever. But don't you dare bury an Avatar ever again. This Myths and Mortals expansion is pretty cool. There's, of course, some map changes, lots of new characters and weapons and toys and things like that. But what I find the most compelling, having played a few matches now, um, don't worry about how many a few is. It's, <laughs> don't no, monitor my time There's no judgment like here. Um, they have these new locations that you can go to that are sort of fashioned after different, uh, different worlds that you would see like Greek gods in, and you can go to these locations. They're like temples on the map. And there's an effigy, a tiny little statue that you kind of like just chuck over to the side, very disrespectfully. And then the God summons a bunch of minions to fight you. They're not super hard. You know, you get dogs in Hades's area. You you get a couple of soldiers in Ares' area, whatever. And you fight these minions, and then the god comes out. You fight the god. You get their bonus weapon. And it's very similar to what we had in the previous update where you would go challenge different people, and then you get a little badge that you can put on that help gives you passive shield and health regeneration, but also uh, tele the telegraphs your location on the map to other players. And then you get their bonus weapon. So... They, they've reused that mechanic, but they've now fashioned it after, you know, these these Immortals of Olympus. So there's five new locations. It's Brawler's Battleground. That's where you find Ares. Grim Gate. Hades is there. Mount Olympus. You get Zeus and his lightning bolt. I'll talk about that in a second. Restored Reels, which I haven't been to yet. And the Underworld, which, again, you know, Hades' spot. So what's really fun about this is that there's also little details that they don't really tell about graph or they don't really mention in the trailer that we just saw if you're watching on youtube um like if you go to grim gate which is like the the gate towards the underworld where you can fight hades they there's the river sticks right that's you jump in the green river and then you have souls that are sort of floating around you little skulls that are floating around your character once you get out and they let you double jump but teleport instead of double jumping so there's like little tiny like Easter eggs about these these gods that are really really fun to discover. Uh, I've been having a blast with it. The lightning bolt 
is a new item, and it's a limited use. I think you have three uses, and there's a recharge in between. But holy crap, it is powerful. Like, you throw down two quick lightning bolts and then the third really powerful bolt and it hovers your character for a little bit um it reminds me a lot of the dragon ball z integration they did recently um or i guess that was oh, a year ago now like where you throw the kamehameha yeah it's a lot like that and it is super powerful you know fortnite has all these really fun power fantasy moments but it's also fun because if you catch somebody lightning bolting let's say one of your teammates they're hovering in the sky completely unprotected you can pick that sucker off so quick oh my god it's satisfying nice. so it's so like high risk high reward oh absolutely glass cannon for sure like it, it's a really good update and and i'm having a lot of fun with it of course it's not as specific as tying it to you know a movie or an ip that people are really passionate about but you know all of the greek gods and legends are <laughs> public domain at this point and they're having a lot of fun with it so i'm enjoying it and of course we get avatar Korra later this month and <laughs> very excited for that so i'm enjoying it she's I mean, obviously, like, the there's a lot of tie-ins that they could do. I mean, she does kind of, she did kind of feel like she didn't fit, but I guess she oh, technically yeah. fits, right? It fell out of nowhere, and the, the what's interesting is in the Battle Pass page for her, there's two pages. It's um, If you've seen the Fortnite Battle Pass, there's, like, four, four or five, six or so um, different things you can unlock, and then you unlock the skin at the end of that page, and then you can go to the next page, and it follows a similar pattern. So for her page, it's page one of two, and she's at the end of page one. And then there's a blank at the end of page two. So I don't know what she upgrades to or if there is an avatar Aang, or, you know, like, I wonder how they're playing around with that because if you know anything about Avatar Last Airbender lore, you know, they can they can connect with different past live iterations. So every avatar is really on the table. If you have a Korra skin, she could unlock her avatar state and then transform into Kyoshi, who is a fan favorite. So I'm wondering what they're going to do with that. I hope it's not just another skin for Korra, but it might be. It might just be like her her fighting ring outfit from the 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 animated series. That would be disappointing. I hope it's another avatar. I just want to see them play around with that world a little bit more because Fortnite is really good at doing that and integrating other IPs into their their world. So, jury's out. We'll see how that one goes, but I'm excited for Korra. I think it's really great that the team at Epic is continuing to expand the different types of gameplay that they're offering. I obviously am a fan of the shooting, but some of these different weapons, I think, give it just enough of a twist, but without, like, breaking the meta of what the game is like. Did you think that there's a specific type of weapon that you're leaning towards right now from this pack? Um, I like, I mean, I'm just an assault rifle fan. There, there's a lot of really cool snipers in the game right now. Um, Ooh, let me look. There's, that's, um, that's my fave. Yeah, they they have uh, who has a DMR? Zeus has a, a DMR uh, that is really really strong. I've been one shot it with it several times by other people. I can't land a shot with it, but it's nice. <laughs> and um, they've also they they've reduced the number of uh, places where you can go to upgrade your guns. If you remember in the most recent season, you could unlock attachments by paying gold bars and um, changing the way that your gun is outfitted once you find it. Um, there's only a handful of spots you can do that now. So if you find a good roll on a sniper, you're good. But really, your best bet is to go find Zeus and get his DMR for, um, you know, more uh, high skill level shots. Uh, but for me, it's it's always going to be an assault rifle. It's just what I like to do. And if they ever put like like a smash hammer or something in it, that'd probably be my next bet. <laughs> but for now, the, the lightning bolt is the closest thing I can get. Um, I'm also a big fan of Aphrodite's wings. Aphrodite's wings? I forget whose wings they are. They have Artemis? wings. Artemis, maybe. Um, you fly up and then you coast. So again, it's like the Nimbus cloud that we had before, but it's nice to get in and get out if you're like your entire team is wiped and you need to collect a bunch of cards and then like get the fuck out so you can go reboot them. That's been a clutch item, not a weapon, but definitely I've been using it for retreat, <laughs> which I have to do a lot when I'm playing. Um, but it's also got a, a pummel that you can do. You can like smash down and like power power smash on the ground with it so it could be used offensively and defensively which is pretty cool and i want to see them do more in that space like 
like if you have a shield and you can throw it like kind of things where you, you can use different items in more than one way. And I think Fortnite most recently has been at its best when they experiment and they tinker like that. So I hope they lean further into that direction. We still haven't seen um, extensive gameplay of Avatar Korra, but hopefully in a couple weeks we'll see, you know, what that moveset is like because there is vi uh, image uh, in the trailer that we saw earlier of her using her water bending. So I don't know if that's going to be both offense and defense, but we'll see. It's really smart of the team at Epic Games to take the animations and the gameplay mechanics that they've designed for one integration and figure out how to just like tweak it for another one. Like under the hood, I know that it's way more complicated than I'm making it sound like it is. <laughs> but it's not copy paste Dimbus Cloud to Angel Wings. <laughs> yeah. Maybe, who knows? Maybe it <laughs> is just that easy in Unreal Engine 5. <laughs> like, I don't. I don't know. Um, I, I, I doubt it. But it just is allowing them to continue to be competitive in a genre that feels like it's starting to get like a little formulaic. And I don't want to use the word stale because I think that that's, you know, maybe a little hyperbolic. But definitely doesn't have the zeitgeist that it did like even three years ago, let alone like five years ago, six years ago, even longer ago. And because there's just so much other competition, you know, extraction shooters seem to be kind of the new hotness right now. Mm. And I think that, you know, doing Battle Royale is still something that um, is, is fun, but not that I'm like thinking about it. But now I'm thinking about it because you're like, I'm back in and I'm like, I haven't bought my Lady Gaga skin yet. And this, these Greek gods look super cool to play with. I want to oh, throw a lightning bolt at somebody. It's pretty cool. And I will say Aphrodite's second skin looks so, so good. And then there's new NPCs as well. You can see some of them walking around and they give you, you know, your little health or your shield potion. And the little blob fish thing that's shaped into the form of a man that is Poseidon is oddly attractive. And I don't know how I feel about <laughs> <laughs> the way that I reacted the to it. It's oddly attractive. Because it's a blob. It's like a, a transparent yeah, blob. It's like, it's, I, it's like but a it's giant sexy. thing of jello. Yeah. It's hot jello. <laughs> hot jello. What's the show? It's like the shoulders and pecs. Yeah. Right? Like, I'm like looking at the art for it. So if oh, people are like, what are you yeah. talking about? So Poseidon's character is like, think of like like a humanoid <laughs> body, like a really muscular body, like the, like King Triton from The Little Mermaid, like giant torso, like mm -hmm. that upside down triangle, just massive shoulders, pectorals, upper body strength. Mm -hmm. But there's no skin. It's all like aqua colored jello. I mean, you could mm -hmm. maybe say it's like seawater, but it doesn't really look like seawater. And then inside the head, there's no like... <laughs> facial features <laughs> there's no hair it's in it's transparent and inside there's like a little guy a little doohickey guy who looks like a little squid inside with like a happy face yeah and there's a it's wearing a crown but i should probably dissect why it's holding I'm... a scepter or it's like a spear like like a trident i guess yeah, you know what? I decided I don't want to know why I think it's hot. It's just <laughs> is. <laughs> it's the it's the pectorals, right? It's like the sure. upper body muscle muscle definition. Yeah, that 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 those watery pecs. I'm all about it. <laughs> it's got bubbles inside. It's a really like it's a really interesting character design. Now that we're the like, more you describe it, it like the I more embarrassment I feel. <laughs> I feel like I had to pull this up again so people could actually see it. I'm trying to find him inside Jeez the trailer. Louise. And be like, oh where God. is this guy inside the trailer? <laughs> so I can find it and pause on it. Because it's just, it's, it is, it's weird. It's weird looking. And I didn't, I'm going to be honest. Like, I didn't think much of it until, until you pulled it out. And then I was like, okay, hold on. What well, because I, I land okay, so, where he is. He's in the railways, and I land where he's right? quite so, often. Here we go. He we gives got, you bonus stuff. We got, I got the trailer here on YouTube. He looks like, yeah, he looks like <laughs> jello. He looks like jello, like like aqua, aqua jello with a crown on. Yeah. I don't, and? yeah, I don't, I don't know. I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> Yo, it is what it is. Whatever. Hormones are weird. I had a kid. Don't, don't come hey, for it's me. The slurp <laughs> god of the sea. 
<laughs> king of the beach. That's what it says in the description oh on Fortnite.com. Slurp god of the sea. <laughs> wow. Amazing. King of my beach, Poseidon. There you go. King Super into it. Uh, well, I'm glad that you're having a great time. Now we have to play. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And um, that I should just be prepared to buy more Fortnite books, I guess, because... Yep. Gaga. I need all of the Gaga stuff yeah. before it goes yeah. away. There's a lot of stuff to buy. Unfortunately, it's a requirement at this point. There's just so much good stuff in this game right now. <sighs> They're doing great. Man. It's tough because I don't really have a ton of money after I just bought into this brand new backer kit from my favorite author, Brandon Sanderson. Oh, tell me more. So y'all know if you've been following the show for a while that I'm big into fantasy literature and one of my favorite authors, Brandon Sanderson, has been incredibly prolific and has been breaking Kickstarter records and came out with a new little video that he was like, I couldn't help myself. I did it again. This is what happens when I go on vacation. I just, I get ideas for stuff. And so I just had to write another book. And I was like, wait, what? Book five <laughs> is coming out this fall. Stormlight Archives. What do you mean another book? And Backer Kit is the crowdfunding, uh, crowdfunding platform that he launched it on. And it's a brand new secret book, but he's tying the secret book to the leather bound of book two of the Stormlight Archives. And I hmm. was just like, what is happening? Why are there so many things now that I have to buy? This is wild. I'm trying to pull up the actual page. Let me find the backer kit page. No, and backer kit. I haven't heard of this site. This oh yeah, I hadn't. I don't think I had used Backer Kit before either. I'd only used Indiegogo and, and uh, Kickstarter. So, um, mm -hmm. the Words of Radiance Leatherbound by Brandon Sanderson is the name of the Backer Kit um, page. If anybody out there is like, "Ooh, Brandon Sanderson has a new Backer Kit," within the first two days, he was already like eight hundred percent of his goal. His goal was two <laughs> million dollars, and he's at currently at eighteen million dollars funded. With uh, over 62,000 backers, and there's still 16 days to go. But the leather bounds are beautiful. That's really why I, why I wanted this. I'm slowly trying to convert my books to leather bounds. But for all of my other book fans out there, y'all know it's expensive. So mm. I'm doing it very slowly, just a little bit at a time. But I was very excited about this. And the new secret project is cool because I really loved the four secret books he did for his last Kickstarter which made stupid money. But, mm. you know, it's just they're all so good. They're just He's just such a great, prolific writer. It's, it's a so lot, rare. a lot of money. Wow. Jaw-dropping. Congratulations. That is huge. Thanks. We feast in, <laughs> fantasy fans. We feast in. Eating good. Yeah. Anyway, that's. I just wanted to mention that for any of the fans out there that are like me and, and, and like to read the Sanderson books. So if you guys missed it, there's still time. You can still get in on the the backer kit for um, for Words of Radiance. So nice. Yeah. And that's it. That's all I've got. Just been hey, playing it's more right. Helldivers and Final Fantasy. I'm going to finish well, we'll that game We'll play some eventually. Fortnite next week. Oh, yeah. there's new. So there's new stuff. Top secret games that yes. I can't mention. But also GDC is happening. The Game mm. Developers Conference. And then PAX. And then PAX East is happening. <laughs> it's it's going to be a wild week next week. Oh, yeah. Yeah, there'll be plenty to talk about next week for sure. Yes. And I'm hopefully going to be doing some special recordings. I'm bringing my gear. I'm making a very quick trip up to San Francisco because I miss going to GDC. And I... Wanted to go see some of the stuff that's being shown there and hopefully talk to some people and bring you guys some extra content. So if there's anything specific that you would like, you know, hit me up, contact at whatsgoodgames.com or leave me a comment on our Patreon page or on our Supercast page and hopefully um, I can make some magic happen. Brianna, nice. always lovely to see you. Oh, thank you. I love being back. It's, it's nice that we spun up again for the new year. It's giving me new energy to get through the days. Yeah. Take it while you've got it, Mama. <laughs> I'll take everything I can. <laughs> Meanwhile, I'm going to go find some more caffeine and sugar. 
All right, everybody, hmm. that'll do it for us this week. We'll see you next time. Bye. One, two, three. What? No, Andrea, what was that? What the heck? Question mark in your voice. I was like, why am I counting up? I never do count up. This is, what's wrong with me? Oh my it's goodness. a weird day. One, two, three, let's go. One, two, three. <laughs> it shouldn't be that funny mm. either, but it is. It is, because it's so off. Oh my gosh. Okay, mm. here we go. How many Three. episodes? <laughs>